How's it going? John Connan here with Neural DSP, and welcome to this video of the Core OS 2.0.0 update. This update contains changes to several core functionalities, so please be sure to read all the updates and changes when you first download the update. In this video, we'll be going over some new features such as a brand new hybrid mode, some global settings, a brand new capture process, as well as changes to the directory of the QC and all things in between. So first up, let's have a look at hybrid mode. To start using hybrid mode, you can configure this by going to the main menu and selecting modes configuration. And this allows you to assign a separate mode to each row of foot switches. Hybrid mode is ideal for users who want to access different presets while still having granular control over their active preset by incorporating either stomp or scene mode. You can create a hybrid mode out of any combination of modes by dragging one mode on top of the other you can also change which mode is on either set of foot switches by tapping the arrow, and you'll see that the colors change and correspond. To remove this combination, you'd hold it down, and then they separate. And additionally, you can choose to remove modes that you don't want to use and toggle between either three, two, or just the one active mode. Moving on to cabs and IRs, it's now possible to globally bypass cabs, IRs, and neural captures of cabs on any combination of the rows. To do this, you'd go into the main menu, select settings, device options, global bypass, and here you see that we can access the cab or impulse response bypasses and select any combination of the rows. And at this point, it's worth mentioning that when bypassing neural captures, the capture type has to be set to cab, as mentioned here in gray. And also, after you've selected either a cab or impulse response to be bypassed here, by the time you've gone back to the grid, it now shows a bypass icon, but it won't be grayed out. And in terms of further global settings, we've now added a global EQ. And to access this global EQ, you swipe down on the grid, Next to the tick, select that EQ icon and then activate the five band parametric EQ. And at the bottom right, you'll see that you can choose to either assign it to outputs one and two and or outputs three and four. It's now possible to configure which outputs the master volume dial controls via the device options menu. So at the top right of the grid, access the main menu, go into settings, device options, and here you'll see master volume knob assignment. And here you can select which outputs you want to assign that master volume knob to. And at this point, it's worth noting that the send one and two outputs can only be controlled by the volume dial when used as outputs and not when part of an effects loop. A new feature that we've added is a gain reduction meter to the parameter screens of all compressor units except the dual and CS3. So here I've loaded in an opto comp in mono and as you see when I play, the gain reduction meter there shows the amount of compression applied. Device versioning has been added and this allows users to select the version of the device that they want to use. And this allows us to non-destructively provide newer versions of devices where the sound has either changed or been improved. You can switch back to prior versions of devices via the contextual menu in the parameters. So here, if I select this green 808 overdrive, go into the contextual menu, you'll see that I can select change to legacy version. And there I've got the previous version of the green 808 indicated by legacy in brackets. And then if I want to go to the most recent version, I go back into the contextual menu and then select model update available. And that will bring me up to the most current and up-to-date version of that device. 
Another new feature added in this update is a scene change button to the tap tempo screen. So this will mean that you can apply specific tempos to specific scenes without having to exit the tap tempo screen. And to achieve this, you'd go into the tap tempo screen as normal by selecting the bottom right foot switch twice, setting a tempo for a particular scene, and then changing the scene with the scene selection button, and then setting a new desired tempo. It's now possible to control whether the bypass state of blocks in scenes is saved when changing their bypass state in stomp mode, hybrid mode, via MIDI, or via the touchscreen. To access this, you go to the main menu on the grid at the top right, go down to settings, device options, and then scene bypass state behavior. And when opening this up, you've got three different options depending on your preference, with the top one already engaged as normal by default. A new feature as part of this core OS update is the IR loader. So I'm gonna select an empty space on the grid and then in the device list, you'll see we have an IR loader. You can select whether it's dual mono, stereo, single mono, single stereo. And once you open the IR loader block, you can select your impulse response file and it loads it into the IR loader. Once you've loaded the IR into this, you'll see that there is a bottom row of parameters that you can edit, as well as a second page if you want to take this editing even further. On page one of the parameters, you can also scroll through your IRs that you have loaded onto your Quad Cortex. The double IR loader block allows you to load two IRs and control them independently. So I'm going to go into the contextual menu, change device into dual stereo. And you'll see now that I can add a second IR underneath. and each of them has independent controls as well. You can also add an IR loader by selecting an IR in the directory, and that will then by default load a single mono block. As part of this new core OS update, we've added a brand new amp. This is the CA Johns 2C. And with this amp, there are three channels, channels one, two, and three. And additionally, we've added an overdrive called the Thunderpore. To demonstrate this, I've created a quick patch using channel one of the John's 2C amp, and then I'm gonna bring in the Thunderpore pedal as well. And now I'm gonna demonstrate the two gain channels of John's 2C amp using channels two and three. On top of the new devices, we've also included 893 brand new neural captures.
And finally, on top of the new devices and neural captures, there have also been a load of new updates to existing devices on Quad Cortex, and you can see the full details of those on the changelog. Moving on to the directory, this has now been completely redesigned and we've implemented a few changes to help you search, filter and categorize items and make it quicker and easier to find exactly what you're looking for. When accessing the directory by tapping a preset name, you'll see the presets, neural captures and impulse responses have all been broken into separate categories and these can each be expanded or collapsed independently. Banks have been shrunk in the directory and this has allowed us to accommodate new buttons for uploading and has also made presets with longer names easier to read. As an addition, the amount of captures that you can store under the My Captures section has increased from 1024 to 2048. But just as a further note, the amount of storable user impulse responses has stayed the same at 1024. The amount of user creatable set lists remains at 11, and this is in addition to the My Preset set list. So that's 12 set lists in total, and this allows for 3,072 user presets. Within the directory, the swipe left functionality on individual presets has been removed, and this has been replaced with a contextual menu at the far right of each preset to reveal further editing functionality, and this contextual menu has also been applied to the set lists. When saving an item, the editor UI has been changed to make more use of the full screen. Within this new save screen, we've got a larger and more responsive keyboard. And then after you touch the blue arrow at the top right, we've added the further possibility of adding more metadata to the preset. And within this new save process, you can access the preset location, as well as skipping ahead to the metadata. Tags have been removed when saving presets on Quad Cortex but you can still add them on Cortex Mobile or the Cortex Cloud. When scrolling through presets in the directory, you'll see that as I scroll down, the next bank of presets appears, and in the middle, you'll see that the banks correspond by going into the next set. And additionally, scrolling performance has been improved, offering a smoother and faster response. A scroll jump section has been added on the right-hand side, allowing you to jump to sections of your filtered results. Banks have been removed from the neural capture section of the directory and replaced with a more robust sorting and filtering system as well as the brand new search. Sorting options have been added to the directory, including name, date added, author, preferred instrument, device type or capture type, as well as game. You can tap these options a second time to change between ascending or descending order. When sorting, the reference box allows you to change the information displayed in the list of sorted results. When in the directory, tapping a capture immediately displays the grid and all the potential places where that can be added to the grid. Furthermore, two arrows will be displayed on blocks that allow you to switch that block with the desired capture. And just as a note here, the two arrows will only appear where there is enough CPU available to switch between the two devices. As is the case with captures, presets can now be sorted. Banks is now a sorting option that you can select. But if you sort by anything else, presets will be displayed in a list rather than banks. Banks have now been removed from the impulse responses section of the directory. Instead, they're now shown in a list with sorting options. And if you have impulse responses with longer names, the middle of the name has been truncated to show the beginning and end of the file name, making them easier to find and read. <laughs>
Moving on to uploading presets, the Cortex Cloud has undergone significant changes and several quality of life improvements have been made. Previously, you would upload a preset by dragging it in a directory. Now, at the top left, you'll see we have an upload icon, and then you can just select which presets you want to upload with the icons on the right. After you've selected the presets to upload, you can then press the upload icon at the top left again, and those will continue uploading in the background. Now on Cortex Mobile, we've removed the styling system completely. So to download presets, you would find the presets on the cloud and then select the downloads icon at the side of each preset. And those selected presets then will join a download queue. Now, when you open the downloads folder on your Quad Cortex, the downloads will begin immediately. Once you've downloaded your presets, they will then live in the downloads folder on the Quad Cortex unless they're either moved to a set list or deleted. If you'd like to move a preset from your downloads folder, all you do is select the save and move icon, choose which set list to put it in, a location, and then after I've done that, it takes me back to the downloads folder. Presets can be auditioned from the downloads folder as well. So all you need to do is tap a preset and it loads it onto the grid. In terms of downloading captures, this process is very similar to downloading presets Apart from, when you select the save and move icon, it will go straight to your My Captures folder. And the reason for this is that there are no banks or set lists for captures. When downloading a preset that has a bundle of captures, all of those captures will go to your My Captures folder when you move that particular preset to a set list. <laughs> In terms of the capture process, there have been a few crucial changes that we need to cover, including the inputs needed for captures, the capture gain, and also capture types. So let's get into it. First off, the inputs needed for a capture have changed from return one and input one to input one and input two. As normal with the capture process, as you carry this out, there are gonna be onboard instructions showing you what to plug into where. So your instrument goes into input one of QC, you can then use outputs one and two, three and four, and the headphone out to monitor the capture process. Capture out then goes to the input of your target device. In this video here, we're just using an overdrive pedal. And then the output of your target device is gonna be going into input two, whether this be a pedal, amp, or mic from a cab. So once you've followed the onboard instructions and everything's all set up correctly, this is now how you carry out a neural capture. If you carry out a neural capture using the previous process, it won't work. So be sure to bear these changes in mind and carry out the new steps for a neural capture. After you've finished your capture, you can name your capture as well as set the type of capture. So here, I'm gonna set this to a pedal. And then you can also set your preferred instrument to use the capture with. And when loading these captures onto the grid, you'll see that the icon corresponds to the capture type that you set when you save that particular capture. So here, you'll see that this red pedal capture shows the pedal icon on the grid. It's worth noting that when saving a capture, if you don't add the capture type or preferred instrument, you can always add that metadata later on via the Cortex Cloud or Cortex Mobile. This metadata can be really useful when organizing your captures as you can sort these by preferred instrument and capture type. A new feature of this update is that when carrying out a neural capture, Quad Cortex will automatically calculate and rate the gain of a capture from one to 10 and store this as metadata. This rating system will go from one being the most clean to 10 being the most distorted or highly saturated. And when scrolling through the directory of captures, you'll see that on the far right, these are rated invisible as well. All existing cloud captures have been updated with this metadata. <laughs> Mm. 
search has now been completely overhauled. As you select search at the top right of the directory, you'll see that it spans the entire screen and recently selected searches also appear in the middle of the screen. Search also displays predicted entries as you type. Searches are separated into categories and tabs for presets, captures, and IRs. There are also subcategories for each of the locations that files can be found, and these can be collapsed or expanded by tapping the arrows on the right hand side. Tapping an item will take you to that file's location in the directory, as well as highlighting it. From here, you can either interact with that file, continue scrolling through the directory, or go back to search for the search results. Search results can be sorted or filtered depending on the category selected, and all the relevant metadata is available to reference as required. Moving on to cloud backups, you can now upload up to five different backups of your Quad Cortex via the settings menu. Each of these entries can either be edited, updated, or deleted. It's now possible to change the function of the bypass parameter on any device via the contextual menu. So here, if I select mute bypass, bypass changes to mute, and after you've selected mute, you'll then see that on the grid, a red line appears over the grayed out device block. All of the factory presets have been updated to include new metadata, as well as all of the newer versions of the devices. And furthermore, any of the presets that were using the utility gate block have been updated to use the input gate block instead. A looper has been added to presets that showcase amp models, and additionally, wire and volume pedals have been assigned to EXP1 and EXP2 where appropriate. The MAC address now also shows in the hardware information screen, and you can access that through device options, about, and then hardware information. And there we go. So that was an overview of the main features in this new update for Quad Cortex, Core OS 2.0.0. This update is available now to download. And if you want a full list of all the changes and new features in this update, head on over to neuraldsp.com forward slash news. I've been John Connor. Thanks for watching.